How do you tell if a scooter just went by? Trust me, you will know it. <laughs> I have an appointment with a lizard here. Let's see what the Jongdians wish for. There are three parts to this walk around Zhongli, which is my farewell to the town that gave me so many memories. You are watching part 2. Good weather starts here. Before part 3 I'm gonna have a sushi break. You can see all about it in my earlier video. We're starting at the Zhongli train station. In the future this will also be the endpoint of the airport metro line, but that's still a couple of years away. One thing that's interesting about Zhongli is that it hosts a huge Southeast Asian immigrant population. And one of the perks is that it's a great place to sample the cuisine of many different countries. Some of the streets downtown are quasi-pedestrianized, if that's even a word. Unusually for Taiwan, many storefronts have labels with Latin letters more than just for show. Some advertise services catering specifically to the immigrants, such as remittances. This board is a place where people hang their written down wishes hoping them come true. Let's see what the Zhongdians wish for. Some are just well-known coined phrases such as Qin Jia Ping An, Family at Peace, Shen Ti Jian Kang, Healthy Body, Tian Tian Kuai La, Happy Every Day. One of those phrases commonly associated with the Chinese New Year warrants a special mention, Zhao Cai Jin Bao. Whoever put it there also wrote next to it in English, make big money. That's not quite the translation, but will do. What's so special about it is how it can be written with four Chinese characters combined into one in a clever way. What else is there? Tong Tse O Pass. Pass the college entrance exams. The Chinese O is just a phonetic for all here. Xi Wang Yi Qing Gang Kuai Tui San. Hope the pandemic is over soon. This one's philosophical. Maybe. Shi Wu Zhao Ling. Find what was lost. Or maybe something really just got lost. Some are beautifully illustrated, like this, must be by some kid. Xi Wang Wo Ke Yi Yo Hen Duo Wan Ju. I hope I can have many toys. Hope you do. One thing that did surprise me is the number of wishes such as Jiao Dao Nan Yo, Kao Dao Hao Xi Xiao, get a boyfriend, get into a good school. Xi Wang Jiao Dao Nan Peng Yo, I wish I can get a boyfriend. Wo Yao Nan Peng Yo, I want a boyfriend. The pandemic was hard on singles and bad for dating. On the other hand, no guys looking for a girlfriend? What gives? Here's one more that I found interesting. Xiao Ren Tui San, vile people, back off. Lu Cha Tui San, green tea, back off. Vile people, got it, so far so good. But green tea, what's wrong with it? Green tea, as used here, is short for Lu Cha Biao. Green tea, bitch, a person apparently innocent and charming, pure as green tea, but at the same time manipulative and skimming behind your back. Pretty much a frenemy, but this word originally described a model that also part times as a prostitute for the right price, so it's more insulting than the English counterpart. Some wishes are not in Chinese. I can see Vietnamese looks just like people's names to me. Interestingly, there is one in some Scandinavian language and it has the AE ligature, so probably not Swedish then. That's all I can tell by myself. Google tells me it's Danish. I'm going to butcher the pronunciation. Taiwan A free and independent Taiwan forever. That is actually really nice. I'm glad I bothered to translate it.
What wishes would people in your country write during the pandemic? We've already heard from the Danish, but what about everybody else? Would it be different or pretty much the same? What do you think? And my favorite one at the end, someone just wrote Xia Tian, summer. Unfortunately, then somebody else put Dong Tian, winter, next to it. I hate that person. Go have your winter elsewhere. Here's where you can win a cute mascot from a claw machine. This particular place is all about rabbit mascots. There are many such parlors, but few people ever play, which means the odds can't be good or it wouldn't make money. I'm an economist by education, you're welcome. And this is where you can play the government lottery. Doesn't take an economist to tell you only the government ever wins. Zhongli is also known as the site of the 1977 Zhongli incident. The so-called incident was actually the police killing people who protested against ballot rigging in the local elections. The national elections were rigged by definition, but in local elections the opposition did actually stand a chance to win, which is why the ruling party made arrangements to prevent this scenario from materializing. There was nothing incidental about the incident, this was how the system worked since the 1940s. What was different this time was that people took to the streets in protest en masse. Opposition parties were banned, so the pro-democracy movement coalesced under the banners of non-partisanship Dan Wai. The historic building we're in originally served as a police dormitory back in the Japanese era and is now preserved as a museum for the events of November 19, 1977. What happened that day, an election day, was that a poll worker got caught red-handed destroying ballots by the poll vigilantes. He was promptly taken to the police who released him with no charges. He went back to his work. Then he was caught doing the same. Again, as more rigging took place, a crowd gathered in front of the police station. This is where the besieged police eventually killed two people. Later that night, the police station was burned down. Eventually, the government had all the opposition figures arrested during yet another incident, the Formosa incident in 1979, or forced them out of the country with no right of coming back. Many people would still suffer, some even die, before Taiwan became free. However, this was the first in a series of steps that led to the end of the one-party rule in Taiwan and eventual democratization. And we're back outside. I really like to explore these small lanes. Here's another one of them. It's amazing what you can see inside, and each one is so different than the others. Such lanes are far from quiet though. There is construction work going on today, on a Sunday morning. And like in the joke about vegetarians, how do you tell if a scooter just went by? Trust me, you will know it. One amazing thing about Taiwan is how they always manage to fit so much greenery into the often cramped spaces.
Another amazing thing is how schools are always such impressive buildings, and this isn't some extraordinary school, just a regular one. The society indeed attaches high importance to education. If you keep a car on such a narrow street, many things can happen. Not sure if these cones provide enough padding. Maybe they discourage dogs from marking their territory though. This is yet another dormitory building dating back to the Japanese era, restored to its former glory or probably way beyond it. It hosts a cafe that serves good tea. You can also learn something about plants or even buy one here. I have an appointment with a lizard here. You might already know the reptile in question as it's made an appearance before. Meanwhile, as the lizard is running late, let's take a look at the traditional Fujian style roof tile. It used to be common, but is now getting harder and harder to find, as it's cumbersome to maintain. Even many temples are built or renovated in the simplified northern style these days. In the end, the lizard and I didn't get much face time. He was off to a class the moment the school bell rang. And we keep exploring the small lanes. The English here makes no sense whatsoever. You can tell the condos are not for the immigrants. Wow, this one's really narrow. Never too narrow for a scooter though. And here we arrive at the mall where I'm gonna have sushi. If you'd like to know more about the salmon upheaval this company caused, or maybe just want to watch me eating, help yourself to my conveyor belt sushi video. Otherwise, see you in part 3.
Any Danish here? If I offended you with my pronunciation of your language, let me know in the comments. I'll buy you a Danish.